What's going on everybody? Today we're talking about the Raspberry Pi 5 and using it as a G-code sender for your CNC machine. We're going to talk about Linux CNC, UGS, CNC JS, and G-Sender. And is a Raspberry Pi uh, worth the cost? Stick around and let's find out. start off, let's talk about why you might use a Raspberry Pi. Well, it's small, doesn't use a lot of power, and doesn't have a lot of fans sucking in all the uh, sawdust you're creating. Plus, it doesn't try to update itself during the middle of a carve or put your USB connection to sleep. So let's look at the Raspberry Pi 5 and what's changed since the Raspberry Pi 4. On the Pi 4, the CPU was a 1.8 gigahertz, and on the Pi 5, we're up to 2.4 gigahertz, and the GPU has an 800 megahertz versus the previous 500 megahertz. But does any of this matter if it won't run your software? So we have four different G code senders we're looking at, and Hey, I couldn't test everyone. There's only so many hours in the day. Let's first look at G Sender. I'm just gonna come out and say it. It will not run on the Pi 5. The Pi 5 is only 64-bit OS. There is no 32. G Sender is only working with 32-bit OS. And why is that? Because of some libraries that are not compatible in the 64-bit OS or not there. I don't know the whole story, but hopefully that gets resolved here in the future. And as soon as it does, I'll uh, get back with y'all with an update on that. If you want to use a Pi and G Sender, you're going to have to use a Pi 4 or before. But I am going to recommend that you use the Pi 4. The Pi 3 is really slow, especially when you look at it compared against the Pi 5. But the Pi 4 is powerful enough. That's what I've been running. And... I have been running um, G Sender 1.0.6 for the longest time. Hadn't really tried to upgrade it. Why? Wasn't broke, don't fix. But with all this testing, I did get 1.2.2 version of G Sender, which is the last 32 bit version that they've released up and running. Quick note on that if you're using the Pi, uh, four, you're going to need to use the Buster OS. Now, you can't use this from the Raspberry Pi imager. You're going to have to go and get an old copy of that and then do a custom flash of your SD card. Don't worry, I have all of those on my website listing out the steps so you can get it going on yours. So, we couldn't get G Cinder going, but what about Linux CNC? Now, this one is going to be kind of limited to the people who are going to need it. Linux CNC is going to be for those who have the hardware to use it. So sorry, Gerbil folks, uh, we're not going to be able to use this. But hey, it does run on the Pi 5. Next up is UGS or Universal G Code Sender. And this is going to get pretty anticlimactic here, folks. It works. Yes. UGS works on the Pi 5. We just need to download the file, unzip it, and there we go. We're up and running. Again, I'm going to have all of this and all the steps to where you can get these files and how to get them going on my website down in the links below. But before you get going, you're going to need to run the setup wizard and make sure your connections are all set there and all of that's taken care of before you can move the machine. CNCJS. Now I've personally done a video on this and there was a lot of do this, get that, install this. Well, I was very skeptical of this working. Thank you for this to the CNCJS team to making this as painless as possible. They give you two methods that you can find on their GitHub page and you just copy that, go into terminal and, and I'm going to say this real quick maximize your terminal window before you run this. If you keep it small, it's gonna open the install window and you will not be able to resize it. So maximize that uh, terminal window first, then put in 
copy and paste this in and run the install. Very simple and sweet. And CNC JS is up and going. So if you're looking at mine right now and seeing that it's running in a web browser, yes, that is how uh, I had it set up. During the initial setup or install of this, you can select it to be auto boot. I also installed the full desktop version. You do not have to do that. You can install the light version and just have it boot up into CNC JS, but that is up to you. Let's take a moment and step back. I wanna point out that this is just installing the G code senders. This is not testing them for 10 plus hours on a cut. This is not seeing if there's any stalling or issues or glitches later down the line. This is only about installing. So three out of the four, hey, they installed not too bad. Just because they installed doesn't mean they're gonna work down the road or you're not gonna have issues with them later. So this is not an endorsement for any G-code sender. This is just letting you know that you can install them on a Raspberry Pi 5. You know, in the CNC world, you want reliability and repeatability. You don't wanna be having to deal with issues and you especially don't want those issues coming from your G-code sender. So again, this is just to say you can install them on the new Raspberry Pi 5 in the 64-bit OS system it has. If you have any other G-code centers you want me to try out or get working on the Pi, let me know down in the comments below. All right, now let's look at costs. I could come out here and say, this is gonna cost you $180 if you do it this way. There's lots of different kits out here, there. I went with the Canna kit. Uh, mine ran about, I think, 160. I pre-ordered it and had been waiting for two months for it to come in. Fun. But now it looks like they're on Amazon and shipping pretty uh, fast. So your results may be different than mine. So you can go with the kit or you can go with a single board. The kit at least gives you a case, uh, a fan, a cool or a cooling solution. Whereas if you just go with the board, you're still gonna have to get a power supply, uh, something to house it or mount it some way. You're gonna have to get a, oh, don't get mad at me people, but I believe it's micro HDMI. I'm gonna have the specs down for all of that in the links below and, and as well on my webpage. So you're still gonna have some accessories that you're going to need to purchase. But what's the alternative? Well, the alternative has been mini PCs. If we take a quick look on Amazon, we're gonna see mini PCs with very similar or not better specs than the Raspberry Pi itself, starting around 140 and up. These are running Windows, and I know we talked earlier about Windows doing their famous, hey, I'm gonna update right in the middle of you doing something. That's not fun, but Let's look at the number of people using Windows versus the number of people using Linux-based projects. Yeah, uh, that Windows user base is much larger. More people are gonna spend more time developing for Windows and making sure things work properly on there. I mean, look at gaming on Linux. Yeah, we're still waiting. Sorry, had to put that joke in there. And speaking of jokes, I'm surprised I haven't even brought up Apple. Sorry, but uh, I'm, I, I can't add a third wheel to my tech relationship here. I have no Apple products. I can't test anything with Apple and I just really don't feel like it. I'm sorry. If you use Apple, hey, great for you. It's just uh, not my cup of tea. Budgetary wise, you know, these new mini Windows PCs are priced low enough that you can get one of those for maybe 20, 40 bucks more than what you could get a Raspberry Pi 5 kit for. So unless you find a really good deal or if you find a, a Pi 4 being resold or you know marked down for clearance, hey, that, that may be the better option. It may be cheaper. Uh, I'm not in your shoes, so I can't say, you know, 
is 40, 80, 60, 100, whatever, going to be the deal breaker for you? That's for you to decide and to figure out. So would I recommend a Pi 5 for your G-Code Center? Right now, no. Even though we got three out of the four installed and moving the machine, they haven't been put through their paces yet. I hate for someone to get into the middle of a 12 hour carve or with five minutes left and something just go horribly wrong. Now that could not be the Pi's fault or the sender's fault. That could be a USB connection or something else. But right now the Pi 5 is untested. So in the coming year, I'm gonna be putting the Pi 5 along with the Pi 4 with G Sender 1.2.2 through its paces and putting it through long, longer carves and see how it holds up. If you're just not into Linux, you don't wanna deal with that and you just wanna get cutting, go get a mini PC. They're just a little bit more expensive. They probably have a little bit better specs as well. And you're just gonna have a bigger user base there to help support you if you do have any issues. Now, of course, that doesn't count for the Linux CNC people because um, that's Windows Linux CNC. It's kind of in the name. Um, for all the install uh, directions on all these G code sender programs we did, you can go to dehammermaker.com and find those there. In conclusion, should you rush out and get a Pi 5? No, not unless you want to. So thank you everyone for watching. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button if you wanna see more CNC videos. And until next time, remember, keep making stuff.